In this video, we're going to learn the first method for making a cream-based soup. So for this method, we're going to rely on pre-made velouté as the base for our soup, and then celery as the vegetable. This method can be applied to uh, any flavor uh, that you want. So instead of a cream of celery soup like we're making today, uh, substitute mushrooms for a cream of mushroom soup, substitute asparagus for a cream of, of asparagus soup, uh, so on and so forth. So to start, what we need to do is we need to sweat together our celery and our onions. So I'm going to start by adding my butter into a pan here. And I'm going to use um, about medium or medium low heat. Um, I don't want this butter that I'm using to smoke, uh, and I don't want to add, when I sweat my vegetables, uh, any color to the vegetables. I'm just trying to uh, turn them opaque, uh, start the cooking process, uh, but I'm not uh, trying to add any brown. So if I had put my butter in the pan and I would have, you know, heard a big hiss, uh, if my butter had immediately started to brown, my pan would be too hot and I'd want to turn that down before adding in my vegetables. All right, so I have my butter mostly melted. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my onions. Add my celery. And I always like to add in a little pinch of salt when I'm sweating vegetables. Uh, the salt helps the, to remove some of the moisture from the vegetables, which helps the, the process along. Just going to go ahead and toss these in the fat. And I'm going to let these cook over between medium and medium low heat uh, until they've sweat. So it'll be maybe three to five minutes. We'll check back in when we're there. So it's been about three minutes and we have our sweated uh, celery and onion. And you can see here uh, the difference in appearance that our celery and onion uh, have taken on. So instead of looking very, very raw, um, they have that kind of cooked look. They're a little bit translucent or opaque looking. Uh, they're also a little bit wilted. What they don't have is any brown color on them. We haven't uh, started browning them, uh, which is important uh, for the sweating. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and add uh, the velouté, which is the base of our soup, uh, into our uh, vegetables here. So I have my velouté preheated, just brought it up to a simmer and kind of held it hot. And I'm going to add my velouté in with my vegetables. And because my vegetable base and my velouté were both hot, this will quickly come up to a simmer. I'm going to let this simmer for uh, about 15 or 20 minutes just until the celery uh, is nice and soft. Um, I do want to make sure I simmer this, uh, not boil it, uh, so keep an eye on that. And the other thing is I want to make sure I occasionally uh, give this a stir. Uh, I like to use a rubber spatula for this, making sure that I scrape all the way across the bottom so that nothing burns to the bottom of the pan. So once this is simmered for 15 or 20 minutes until our celery is nice and tender, uh, we'll check back in with you. So it's been about 20 minutes and our soup is about ready to uh, puree. So to puree this soup, uh, we're going to use a food mill. Uh, so this is a pretty standard setup here for a food mill. <clears throat> so the way we're going to set up a food mill is usually there's going to be a grate at the bottom uh, and you can see the grate is kind of curved. So we're going to go curved side up and drop the plate into the bottom here. Make sure it's nice and level set. The next part um, of our mill uh, is going to drop in. And what we need to do is we need to connect this bar. And you can see the little um, cutouts in the bar uh, into the hinges here. So I'm going to line up this bottom 
with the hole in the bottom of my grate. And I'm going to line up the two holes in the bar with the little hinges on top. So I line up my bottom, make sure that's set in. And then this bar is on a spring, so all I need to do is push down to line up into the, those hinges. You see it pop into place and it's nice and secure. And now I can crank my food mill to uh, push my food through. All right, so uh, the next step of the process here is I need to uh, puree uh, my cream soup. So we've cooked uh, simmered this soup for about 20 minutes. The uh, celery and onions have gotten nice and tender. Um, for my food mill, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pour the soup into the mill. Some of that liquid uh, is going to separate out and then I can push the vegetables through. I could also uh, use a colander or uh, a, a fine mesh strainer like this, a chinois, uh, to separate out the, uh, the vegetables and then put them in the mill. Uh, but this will work fine for what we're doing today. Add our soup in. And then all I'm going to do is just push, just crank the food mill like this, and this mill is going to push these vegetables down through the holes in my bottom plate. You can see I'm cranking clockwise, and occasionally I'll stop and give it a counterclockwise crank. The clockwise pushes that food into the mill, and then when I crank counterclockwise, it actually helps to remove the food from that plate so that it can push through uh, better. You can see I have some food stuck to the sides of my food mill, so I can just use my rubber spatula here. Give it one more go. All right, and then I just want to use my rubber spatula again and scrape off any of those, uh, that remaining pureed uh, celery that's on the bottom of my mill here. Uh, some food mills will actually have pieces that connect to the bottom. There'll be little rubber pieces that'll scrape off the bottom as we crank. Uh, this one doesn't have that, so we just have to have that extra step at the end of scraping out our extra puree. All right. So the last step um, to get this soup nice and smooth is we're actually going to pass it through a chinois strainer. So I'm going to take our vegetable puree uh, along with our soup base. And I'm going to pour it once again into my chinois. And I'm going to use my rubber spatula here to help pass this soup through. And what this is going to do is this is going to help uh, remove uh, any of the fibrous tissue that we left uh, uh, when we pureed our soup. There is going to be a little bit of pulp left in the bottom of the chinois. Um, if we cooked our product long enough, which we did and got that celery or whatever vegetable we're using, uh, you know, nice and soft, um, we shouldn't have too much left because it should be soft enough that when we puree it, uh, in the food mill, uh, it's kind of fine enough to pass through uh, the chinois here. So you can see I'm using the spatula and I'm just kind of pressing this pulp along the sides and as I press you can see uh, a lot of moisture comes out. We're getting some of that puree from our celery out. You can see now, I've gotten about all the liquid out that I'm going to get. All 
Great, so I have my really nice smooth soup. So the last step I need to do is just to finish this soup. Uh, I'm gonna evaluate for flavor uh, as well as uh, texture. So I really want like a nice light nappe. And I can see now I have that. It's just kind of clinging to the back of my spoon. Really nice light nappe. Um, if it was thicker than this, I would go ahead and add um, a little bit of uh, extra stock to thin the soup out, um, but I don't think I need to do that. Um, I think this is about the texture that I'm looking for, this really nice light texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit of heavy cream just to finish. Uh, sometimes you can also finish uh, soups by swirling in whole butter. That's a common uh, finishing technique for uh, for soups and, and uh, sauces uh, to just swirl in some, some whole butter. Uh, gives a nice mouthfeel and shine, but I'm just gonna finish this with heavy cream. A little bit of salt and a little bit of white pepper. In really light white uh, cream soups like this, I'm gonna use that white pepper so that I don't get those uh, flecks uh, that you would get with black pepper. I'm going to go ahead and evaluate this for taste. Mm. Yeah, I don't think that needs anything else. Nice, bright celery flavor. Okay. Nicely seasoned and really, really nice and smooth, which is probably our biggest quality indicator for a cream soup. We want that really nice, smooth, velvety feel in our mouth uh, while still getting that really bright uh, flavor of whatever vegetable it is that we're uh, making the soup of. So in this case, celery. Let's review. There are three main techniques that we're going to use to make cream-based soup. In this video, we learned the first method where we used a pre-made velouté added into our vegetable base. Next, after we've pureed the soup, in this case using a food mill, we're going to pass the soup through a chinois to ensure a velvety mouthfeel and smooth soup. Finally, this method can apply to a variety of different vegetables to make cream soups. You're not just limited to celery, you can use asparagus or peas, really any vegetable that you want for uh, a nice cream soup.